Hey everyone, I'm Flo. Dude is behind the camera. And who remembers TV dinners? Mike says a frozen dinner is okay. As long as it's Swanson. It's the next best thing to your good cooking. Swanson makes it good. One of the TV dinners that I remember most is Salisbury steak. So that's what we're going to be making today. Although you don't need to eat it in front of the TV. My family never allowed us to eat in front of the TV and that's the same rule that we have today. No devices at the table and we just enjoy each other's company. Starting off with one and a half pounds of ground sirloin and you can use ground beef, whatever you like. I prefer to know that it was steak at one point. Anyways, I've been looking for a meat grinder to go on the KitchenAid and I only see the plastic one and which I'm like, mm, I'm not sure I want like a plastic body for the grinder. If anyone has any tips on like whether to buy the plastic one or spend a little bit more for the metal one, I'd appreciate your feedback. I'm adding one egg to the meat. I don't normally buy canned soup, but I really like putting onion soup in my Salisbury steak. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can use a little bit of beef broth and minced onion instead, but I just like the flavor of the soup. I'm pouring about one third of the can in here. I'm putting in a pinch of basil, a good pinch, not just like a little itsy bitsy pinch. And a pinch of oregano, a pinch of thyme, and a pinch of parsley. Or you know what you can use is um, Italian seasoning if you have and just use about a teaspoon of that. It'll be equivalent to about, to about that amount of seasoning. I'm adding two teaspoons of Worcestershire. One, two, my estimation. I'm using a tablespoon of ketchup, a teaspoon of salt, and freshly ground pepper. I don't know, about a quarter teaspoon. Or until your arm gets tired. And I'm using panko because that's the type of breadcrumbs I have at home. But you can use regular breadcrumbs if you like and I'm using half a cup. This is just a quarter cup because I can't get my half a cup in here. I've pressed saute and adjusted the heat to more. In the meantime, I'm just going to mix up my meat mixture and I'm wearing gloves to do it because I like to do it by hand. I don't like the feeling of the meat. I mean, you still feel it. And try not to over mix it. That, my impression is that it gives you a tough steak or a tough burger or a tough meatball, whatever you're mixing. And so just mix until it's combined. If you find it's too dry, you can add a little bit more of the onion soup. But if, you, if it's too moist, you can add a little bit more of the breadcrumbs. I'm going to form six patties with the meat. It's about a quarter pound per patty. And I like to make mine oval shape, but you can make them whatever shape you like. I'm adding two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to add our patties. Just three at a time. We don't want to overcrowd them. We want them to be able to brown. In the meantime, I'm going to slice up my onions and my mushrooms. Slicing up my onion, using one onion. This has been about three minutes on one side. We're going to just flip it over. And slicing up the mushrooms, I have about half a pound of mushrooms, and that was about ten. So it's been about three minutes on the other side. 
And we're not cooking them all the way through, like that will happen when we put it under pressure. We just want to brown it for now. Okay, I'm gonna add another tablespoon of olive oil because the oil is pretty much gone, absorbed into the burgers. So sirloin is not that fatty. So you're not gonna get all that splatter as you would using just a regular ground beef. So that was three minutes per side to brown the meat patties. And I'm adding another tablespoon of oil because there's not much oil in there. And if you decide you'd like to use butter instead, which I would prefer, but I'm trying to keep it simple for y'all. I am now tossing in the onions. And that will help get all the brown bits off as well because the onions will release some juices. And I'm gonna go grab a wooden spoon now. So cooking meals at home saves you a ton of money. You know what? Actually, a couple of days ago, our kitchen sink was plugged up and we couldn't use our kitchen sink. And so we had to eat out for two days straight, I think. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two days. And I was just so tired of eating out. I just wanted my kitchen back. Not to mention the added cost. Well, not just added costs, but you just feel, well, I feel just icky after eating out so much and I don't know if it's it's just like eating restaurant food not that restaurant food isn't yummy it is yummy but when I have too much of it, it I just don't enjoy it so you see how the onion has released some of the juices and now all this like stuff the brown bits at the bottom of your pot is now easily scrapable and I'm going to add the mushrooms and that will also help to get rid of the rest of the brown bits It looks like a lot of mushrooms, but mushrooms shrink a lot when cooked. I'm just gonna cook that for a couple of minutes. So the onions sauteed for another two minutes or so. Now we added the mushrooms and we're gonna cook that also for about two minutes. So it is important to scrape out the rest of the brown bits on the bottom of your pot because the Instant Pot may give you a burn signal if it thinks that things are burning at the bottom. Turning off the saute mode, pouring in the rest of the can of onion soup. Adding about a quarter cup of water. Another two tablespoons of ketchup. A teaspoon of Worcestershire. Just give that a bit of a stir. I just remember Salisbury steak sauce was always a little bit tangy, so I like that there's ketchup and Worcestershire in there. Okay, we're adding our meat patties back on top. What? I'm just gonna pour it in. I was half expecting you to do that. <laughs> I'm just trying to be, I don't know what. Delicate. Delicate. Doesn't matter. It's all good. Locking the lid into place, making sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we're just gonna cook this for 10 minutes. So as you can see, it really doesn't take much to get a meal on the table. And using the Instant Pot, it just saves me a little bit of time because while it's cooking and doing its thing, I could spend that time with my kids or help them with their homework. Or even if you don't have kids or they're uh, grown and out of the house, you can still use that time to do something that you love to do instead of standing around the kitchen trying to make dinner. All right, that didn't take long to come up to pressure. 10 minutes of cook time. Oh man, that looks good. It does look good. We're gonna remove the patties and we're gonna thicken the sauce. Turning saute mode back on. Nope, gonna cancel first. Saute mode back on. And we're gonna thicken the sauce. This is kind of watery right now. I have two teaspoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of water. It has to be cold water. 
Otherwise, your cornstarch will not dissolve. Just become one gloopy mess. Now that it is slowly simmering, I'm gonna pour the slurry in and just stir and cook it until it comes back up to a simmer and the sauce thickens. That didn't take long. If you want it thicker than this, you can add more cornstarch slurry. But I think this is good. I'm gonna pour this over the Salisbury steaks. I won't call them patties anymore. I know you guys are all waiting for. The taste. So it's come to my attention that some of you out there in YouTube land are complaining that what happened to the taste. And you know, I didn't think that it was such a big deal to you guys, but apparently it is. So there you go, the taste. Dude, that looks awesome. And it really didn't take much time to get a decent meal on the table. Uh, I'm, I'm just oversimplifying, but it really doesn't take that much time. So for all the, the, the families out there that are struggling with time and you wind up going to get takeout or dining out because you feel like at that fork in the road, at that time of the day that you choose, well, we got to feed the family. That's a no brainer, but how do you feed the family? And that's the question, that fork in the road, you choose, do you like rock a meal at home or you simply go out or call the, the wife or the husband on their way home from work to grab takeout? That's a real important decision. And I really dig it that, well, we have the flexibility, but when you cook and we have that meal at home around the dinner table, that's where conversation happens and that's when the kids talk about their day and that's where we can connect with the kids and I want to keep on connecting with each other over a meal. Salisbury steak, where do I begin? You know, I'm not a huge fan of the mushrooms but when it comes to being accompanied with the gravy and the onions, I'm okay. You guys remember, you know the compartments in the tin foil, I'm sure they still have that but that's what I grew up on is the Salisbury steak was one of the major ones that we bought. So you got the compartment with gravy that was almost covering the meat completely. And then you have the other side where it has the frozen vegetables that were disgusting. And then you have the potatoes that were barely potatoes. And so what I did after eating a certain portion of the meat is that I would shovel all the veg and some of the potato into the remaining gravy to make the frozen gross vegetables taste better. So, but anyways, thanks mom for feeding me. The mashed potatoes are, are in the works in the kitchen there. So I just wanted to taste it based on this because y'all might have a different idea of what sides would go with the Salisbury steak, but on its own, nice subtle flavors. It wasn't too strong. And the mushrooms were not pressure cooked to smithereens, same thing with the onion. It's still discernible. I like that. It's gonna go really well with the mashed potato side or whatever side you choose. And knowing my daughter and myself, a couple of dabs of sriracha, I think, in with that mix. <laughs> Cause you know I'll need a little more heat. Yes, absolutely, but good. Thanks dude. Mm -hmm. So dude, when you were eating in front of the TV, like did you have one of those folding tables that collapsed and then yeah. like we you had can a sit. whole set because you know ready to deploy asap with the tv on there's no time to waste <laughs> all right everyone i really hope that you enjoyed this video and instead of buying tv dinners you can make your own at home if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below and if you haven't already, check out my new cookbook on Amazon. Again, it is just the electronic version right now on Kindle, but the paperback, we're working hard on it and we're trying to get that out there ASAP. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.